Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. For today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to do the dual cooling pipe upgrade on the Lenovo ThinkPad T480. Now this module right here was originally for the T480 with a discrete NVIDIA GPU, but it fits just right in for our non-DGPU equipped unit. Since we're going to have the CPU exposed, I'm also going to show you guys how to do a thermal repaste on the CPU. I have here with me today some Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Thermal Paste. I'm only using this because it's what I have on hand at the time of filming, but there are plenty of other great options in the market out there. So if you've grown tired of the incessant whirring on the cooling fan of your Lenovo ThinkPad T480, this mod is for you. Let's get to it. As always, we start by removing the external battery. Set that to the side. Log into your BIOS settings to disable the internal battery. I had someone ask me before why I always include this step in my videos. There was another comment that said that he wished he knew there was a way to disable the internal battery before frying his backlight fuse. But it's always best not to skip this step. So you go to config, power, and disable built-in battery. The screen should turn black like this, and once it does, just verify that you don't have any residual power in there. Once that's done, you can go ahead and open the laptop up. So on the underside of the T480, there are 6 screws holding the lower cover on. Let's go ahead and unscrew them. The screws are supposed to be held on to the lower cover by plastic clips on the other side, but the plastic clip on this one has already worn out, allowing the screw to completely detach from the lower cover. Watch out for that so you don't lose any of the screws. If your T480 still has a rubber cap here covering the port beside the USB-C, make sure to remove this before attempting to remove the lower cover. To remove the lower cover, you start from one of the rear corners, open it like so, work your way forward, proceed to the other side, make sure the front edge is completely detached. If it's not, you start from both front corners and work your way to the middle. Detach this rear rib right here by slowly working your way from one side to the other. And once all of that's done, remove the lower cover completely by raising everything up and slowly sliding it rearwards. There you go. You'll notice that our new cooling fan right here with the dual heat pipes is much much longer than the factory one in our T480 here. And that's because this part is supposed to go over the dedicated GPU on the other T480 models. Since we do not have a dedicated NVIDIA GPU here today, You'd want to cover the underside of this with some foam tape, like I did here. Make sure it's thick enough to keep the pins off of this copper piece over here. You might notice that I already have some pin marks on the foam tape and that's because I'm redoing this mod right here just to show you guys today. To remove the old cooling fan, you'd want to grab on both corners of this plug right here using your fingernails or a spudger tool and slowly wiggle it out, like so. Lift the wire. There are only four screws holding the cooling fan down. Let's go ahead and completely loosen all four of them. Once all four screws are completely unseated, you can go ahead and slowly wiggle this old cooling fan up. There you go. Before working on the CPU, it's actually a good idea to physically disconnect the internal battery right here. So what you do is grab onto both corners of the plug using your fingernails and slowly wiggle the plug out and move it out of the way. Before you can install the new cooling fan, you'd need to remove all the old thermal paste from the CPU first. And you do that by pouring some alcohol solution on a lint-free paper towel. 99% or 90% alcohol works best, but I've had great results with 70% solution so far with all the jobs I have done. So again, you start by pouring some onto the lint-free towel and just do light dabs first to soften the old thermal paste. The 
Thermal paste on this one is still pretty fresh, so you can see that it comes off pretty easily. But you'd also want to clean the overruns on four sides of each of these rectangles. Once you have it cleaned up like so, you can go ahead and start prepping the new cooling fan. Same story here, use some alcohol solution and clean the copper pads on the underside of the cooling fan. Once you have the copper pad cleanly exposed, you can go ahead and start reapplying new thermal paste on the CPU. Thermal Grizzly conveniently includes this nice applicator right here. So what you want to do is apply a thin layer on both rectangles on that CPU and use the applicator to spread it around like so. You don't have to worry about any sort of overrun that goes over the edges here. Since that's where it's going to end up anyway once the copper pad on the new cooling fan presses down on our thermal paste and evenly spreads it around. That said, we still have to try to spread it around the best way we can. So after cleaning up the thermal paste application a little, this was my final result. You don't really have to worry about the vertical lines right here, since the copper pad on the new thermal fan will spread the thermal paste pretty evenly once it sandwiches it onto the CPU as you tighten the screws. With that said, we can go ahead and install the new cooling fan. We now have our dual heat pipe cooling fan ready to go, so let's go ahead and drop her in. But before we do that, as mentioned earlier, make sure you have some foam tape covering this part of the cooling fan's underside so you don't get contact with the DGPU pin provisions. Alright, let's go ahead and lower the cooling fan down. And as you're doing this, you'd want to make sure the screws are already aligned with their respective holes. This way, you don't get lateral movement and accidentally spread the thermal paste that we so carefully applied earlier. Once you have all five screws aligned over the respective holes, it's time to start them one by one. The most important screws are the four ones right here around the CPU, so let's start these in the cross pattern first. If you are enjoying this video so far, I hope you can click on the subscribe button down there. I'm chasing a thousand subscribers right now and I'd greatly appreciate all the help I can get at the moment. Let's continue starting these screws. And once you have those four started, you can go ahead and start this fifth one. Now it's time to tighten them down, again in a cross pattern. And as you're doing this, you can really feel the copper pad on the cooling fan pushing down on the newly applied thermal paste. So any sort of unevenness that we had earlier would probably be even by now. Once you have all five screws tight, it's time to turn our attention to these plugs right here. We start with the plug on our new cooling fan, so we insert it in the port. Slowly push from both corners with our fingernails. Next, we reinstall the internal battery plug that we disconnected earlier. Same thing, get it started into its port and push using both fingernails. There you go. Now we've finished everything, it's time to reinstall the lower cover. As always, we carefully place it on top and slowly work our way around the perimeter of the laptop. Break this rear edge right here since it always needs a little more attention. We can then tighten the screws one by one. And don't forget the screw that totally came off the lower cover earlier. And don't forget to reinstall the external battery. I hope you found this video useful. If you want to see more of these, please hit like on this video and subscribe to my channel. I promise not to spam your feed with clickbaity thumbnails and the like. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.